Right, good afternoon. I'm Holly Knight. I am with BGC Advantage. We are the Daytona Beach Housing Authority's uh, development partner. And with me, I have Ms. Terrell Bates, the executive director for the Daytona Beach Housing Authority. Ms. Terrell, would you like to give a greeting? Um, just thank you so much for those of you who've taken the time to be here today. This is really important to us. We wanna be sure that our community is economically involved in some of the opportunities here and BGC um, and their team have put together a really nice presentation to help you understand what opportunities there are and how to become a part of them. Thank you. All right, I think we'll get started. We are going to introduce some of the uh, key people that are with us today. Uh, we do have Mr. Doug Wilson, who is with Sawyer Incorporated. That is the general contractor for the project that we're talking about. And Bryce Risher, who is with DNA Workshop. And Bryce is the um, architect that uh, is working with us on the project. Today, uh, we are hosting this minority contractor outreach, as well as section three outreach. And for those of you who don't know what that means, um, we are really looking for minority participation, women-owned business participation in this construction project that we'll be discussing. And we want opportunities for people from the low income communities, from the development itself, from any of the HUD funded programs to also have an opportunity to participate in jobs and training and um, really see this as a job, not just a housing um, stimulus in the community. So um, if you're with us now, we are so happy to have you. And if you're viewing this and um, are, are viewing it from the website, we're still open for questions and certainly uh, would love your participation. Please spread the word. So just to tell you a little bit about BGC Advantage, we are, are an experienced full service development firm. We specialize in public housing um, revitalization, public housing asset repositioning, and we really work with housing authorities and nonprofits in bringing their vision to life in a community. Um, we do have um, almost 4,000 units in 13 states, and we really are concerned about impacting lives and not just the bricks and sticks of the buildings. So um, we are going to be talking about a transition that the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development has allowed the Housing Authority to undergo. And the Housing Authority is a very creative agency and has decided to go with what's called a RAD transaction. That stands for Rental Assistance Demonstration Program. It is a federally um, allowed demonstration program, which means it's in its pilot and so the Housing Authority is on the cutting edge and really being creative in taking on these redevelopment efforts. You're looking at the Daytona Beach RAD um, transition and the first project within um, a series of projects are these two towers that are located um, right here on the Riverfront Bay area. Windsor Maley, um, there's a total of 300 units we will uh, demolish two, so we'll end up with 298 units. And the current owner of the day, uh, is the Housing Authority of Daytona Beach. Um, with that in mind, we have a population that is currently living there. And so we ask any subcontractors that are interested in viewing the project to make arrangements through the um, general contractor and we will set up an opportunity for you um, in conjunction with the housing authority notification to the residents um, so that you are able to come on if you need to take a closer look. The new owner is a partnership with the investor and the housing authority as well as BGC Advantage. That new owner is um, the WM at the River Limited Partnership. This project is considered a HUD project. It will have low income housing tax credits. Uh, it will have section eight and additional HUD funding. And we will have Davis-Bacon wages and there will be Davis-Bacon reporting, section three reporting and minority reporting. Just to kind of give you a little overview of the site plan and we may come back to this. 
Um, we're really not changing these two towers much, but you can kind of see the, uh, the, the two existing sites and there is a Cedar Street that runs through it. Um, there is an additional building that is uh, for community services. And then you can see some of the parking that's currently there. One of the things that we will be doing are gating each of the sites. Um, so there will be entrances and gated entrances to the parking on site as well. This is um, just the current uh, Windsor Apartments and this is a front view and then you can kind of see where it is on the map. Um, there, this site is made up of zero bedrooms, one bedrooms and two bedrooms. And the structure was built back in 1967. So we, are, we do have a bit of an older structure. Um, I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna stop and ask Bryce Risher to join us for this portion of the call and really kind of talk through and walk through the first floor of the Windsor. Bryce? Yeah, sure. Um, so um, as, as Holly said, um, we're the, the architects on, on the project and we're based out of Baton Rouge. We kind of go all over the country doing these renovations. So we've kind of been able to specialize in these particular um, modernizations and, and um, upgrades to these existing facilities. Um, and this one is just like the rest. Um, we will try and update all the, the interior finishes and really upgrade the existing housing stock that is currently there while adding, you know, additional amenities and um, even some commercial aspects to help engage the site and um, help contribute to a, a vibrant community um, just to, to help um, increase the, the activity and the, uh, the uh, quality of life for each of the residents and the, the surrounding community. So on, on the first floor, there are several existing units and we're planning to keep all of those. Um, the, uh, the, there's really not a major um, you know, change to the existing footprint. Uh, we were proposing some new parking in lieu of some of the amenities that were currently there. So it's a little bit of paving. We're trying to, to utilize the existing um, facilities kind of as is. The one change that we were planning on making was in that um, existing community space on the first floor. Um, we were anticipating turning that into um, a, a future commercial space. And right now it would just be a white box for, um, for the purposes of this, this bid and this part of the project. Um, but eventually maybe possibly get a, a commercial tenant or some sort of restaurant to uh, maybe take over to help create a mixed use for the property. Um, that's, um, that's about it for the first floor. Um, you know. So again, um, Bryce, not to interrupt, but I just want to kind of reiterate that this is something that um, would be something that would be a phase two. Um, at this point in time, we're only interested, like um, Bryce said, in having the white box and the kitchen so that our residents are able to um, utilize this for programs and, and things of that nature. So just kind of want to um, point that out. Well, well the and one other would thing like would be the um, there is an existing um, a computer lab that we're pr proposing maybe a possible new program area that may require a little bit of modernization and a little bit of reconfiguring of existing walls but for the most part majority of the walls are getting are, are going to stay uh, a part of the the unit re renovation will include all new finishes all new millwork um, plumbing fixtures flooring paint patching of any existing um, sheetrock that is that is cracked or peeling or painting. So whenever we leave these units, it, it for all intents and purposes looks like a brand new building. Um, and a part of the, the finishes, we will also be upgrading existing systems um, and appliances. So the things you do, you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis for the comfort is, um, is also brand new. In addition to the, um, the windows on, on site. Okay, moving on to the second floor. Um, and, and really we can kind of uh, talk about this generically. Again, um, that we're not changing the existing footprint. We're renovating uh, extensive renovation within the units. 
uh, new lighting, new flooring, as Bryce mentioned. Um, one of the um, one of the other uh, things that we're looking at is certainly um, elevator renovations and windows, and then uh, again some of the exterior painting. And um, we really think that we can do a lot with lighting and some creative uh, reconfiguring of. Uh, just the way that the dividers are in some of the um, efficiencies and, and one bedrooms. Um, there, in some of these, there's quite a bit of storage. We intend to keep that. Um, and we also do uh, intend to have major renovation within the, um, within the bathrooms as well. Again, like the architect Bryce said, um, you're going to see these are going to end up being um, totally new units. Um, I think Bryce kind of mentioned through this uh, scope of work um, and just kind of what we're what we're looking at doing. Again, it is a very comprehensive uh, scope of work, and um, some we will be retrofitting for ADA compliance. And then there are specifics in each of these buildings that we'll be uh, addressing for programs that the residents will take part in. So um, moving over to the Maley Apartments, um, these were built in 1942. Um, there is going to be a little bit of demolition. Two units will be demolished and there's gonna be some new construction. Um, this is where we're gonna really move the, um, the offices for both of the sites. And there will be amenities at both of the sites that folks can come back and forth um, um, from one site to the other. And so um, this will be a main, main gathering location for programs and activities of the residents and also to check in uh, or even do uh, office paperwork and, and management type activities. You can see that it's directly across the street from Cedar Street. And then in, in this picture, you can also see the program building that's right behind Windsor. So Windsor, uh, his, here's what is called Maley. And then this is the program office on, that's located right behind Windsor on Maley Street. And then you can see some of the existing parking. You wanna talk about the first floor, Bryce, and kind of walk us through um, some of the changes here? Yeah, sure. Um, so um, on, on Maley, there's a little bit different of a scope. Instead of keeping the existing footprint, I think we were proposing to increase the um, the common area space to create a large glass um, um, community room to, to be utilized by the residents um, that will also take over some existing amenity space on the outside. But we feel that including the um, the, the open large area for people to gather and, and converse is uh, is still important. Um, one other additional thing that we are doing at Maley is we're adding a new elevator and shaft to the outside um, of the unit in addition to the two existing elevators, as well as um, completely modernizing both existing elevators in this renovation. And one thing I did not mention at Windsor is we are also planning on doing a, um, you know, having new elevators as well. Um, the uh, a portion of it will get transferred into a new gym. And for the most part, the majority of the exterior will remain the same, but we will um, increase the aesthetics by adding additional landscaping and, um, you know, creating uh, the gated environment that will uh, increase the security for residents. Um, for the exterior, similar to, to Windsor, we're, we're proposing a new um, exterior paint scheme and all new um, storefront windows um, that will be re replace the existing single pane window systems. Um, on the first floor, there will be a demolition of two uh, existing units that are will be turned into a new leasing office, which is showed by the green. Um, and then there are four existing units that will remain on the first floor. And similar to uh, to Windsor, they will be upgraded. All the fin interior finishes will be upgraded. Plumbing fixtures, uh, casework, uh, lighting will be all LED lighting and um, new high energy efficient um, appliances and uh, mechanical systems. And, and, and along with the, some of those external um, and internal renovations, we'll also go through a rebranding process. And so 
when we started the presentation, you saw the WM on the um, top of the buildings. And so again, these will be affordable housing. Um, they will no longer be public housing. Um, and uh, again, you know, they will be identified as the WM at the river. So, um, you know, signage will be new along with the fencing, painting, lighting on the exterior so that as people from the community come across the bridge or come into uh, in on their boats, they'll really see a new shiny um, uh, landmark that um, really will denote the neighborhood. Okay. Bryce, you want to cover the second floor at Maley? Yeah, on the second floor, we were proposing um, where the new um, addition is on the first floor um, that has taken over the existing outdoor amenity space. We were proposing an outdoor deck to kind of take the place of that so we don't lose that in, in the renovation. Um, and similar to the units that are on the first floor, we are also proposing to, um, you know, renovate all the ones on the upper floor in, with a similar scope of work. Um, in addition to all the, the building upgrades and the system upgrades to the building um, to create these new sh two shiny landmark landmarks that will, um, you know, just increase the, the overall quality of life for all of the residents that, are, that live there. So um, on the floors, the laundry mats also will be upgraded um, to be more energy efficient and then also to meet the the funding standards that we will um, that will be um, under for each of these. All right, so scope of work for Maley is very similar. However, we do have the brand new elevator shaft and elevator um, uh, space and elevator that will make three elevators at this particular project. And then of course the addition of the community room and the second floor um, lounge area. Uh, other than that, a lot of the same uh, type uh, systems and same uh, quality of rehabilitation you'll see at Maley as you do at, at Windsor. Um, I want to talk just a little bit about the timeline. Of course, today we're having the minority contractor in Section 3 outreach. We'll be working through due diligence with our investors. Um, we do have uh, outside investors, in addition to the Daytona Housing Authority, there are private investors as well as lenders that are working with us on this project. Um, the permitting has started and you can see that we're working towards getting our permitting um, completed. We're looking to close in May, have a notice to proceed right after, and then two years later, construction completed. So um, again, that's kind of the timeline um, I'd like to turn it over to, um, to, to Doug. Sorry, uh, this is a little bit more about Bryce. I'd like to turn it over to Doug and um, if he can talk a little bit more about the general contractor work, um, how they often work with their subs, just kind of some of, the, um, some of the issues that the GC expects in the site. Um, before I do that, I do wanna make mention that we will have in-place renovation. Um, Sawyer is very experienced with renovating in place. Um, we will be um, renovating by tower stacks and not by floor. So that may be a little different. And um, we can ask Doug to talk a little bit more about that and what expectations will go along with those phases. So Doug, I'm gonna turn it over to you. And if you wanna talk just a little bit more about your company and some of your expectations. You're, You're on, mute. on mute, Doug. Can't hear you. Thank you. Rookie mistake. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, as Holly said, uh, Doug Wilson, I'm the pre-construction manager. I will be handling all the pricing and negotiations with the subcontractors, making sure everybody's got the good understanding of the scope. Um, here was our, we were very familiar with doing uh, in-place renovations with the community still occupying the building. As Holly briefly touched on, we're going to be doing by phases stack. Uh, so the building will be occupied, but we're gonna have total about 26 units at a time under construction at one point in about uh, 40 days per, per section. Uh, as far as talking to uh, 
soliciting for work. We're going to issue the drawings out and we would have them accessible to all subs. I would be the point of contact, uh, like Holly mentioned earlier, to go do a site visit. We will schedule some set times and dates with the owner to view the facility so everybody get a, will have a good understanding of what you're dealing with and for a unique situation of renovation, which is always, um, you know, a little bit harder to do when it's the renovation of a facility rather than a new construction. Uh, I don't know if anything else I need to touch on. Yeah, I, I think um, just uh, looking at um, Bryce and Doug are the contacts that um, you want to reach out to. And really all of the subs will go through negotiations with Doug Wilson. And um, you can reach him at D-W-I-L-S-O-N at S-A-U-E-R dash I-N-C dot com. And Doug, if you will also give your, um, the best phone number to reach you at, this is being recorded and people will be able to um, pull the phone number as well. Yeah, the phone number is area code 904-362-6444, extension 366. So Doug, you cut out a little bit. Could you repeat it, please? 904 Two six two six four 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 extension three six six. Thank you. Welcome. And um and you know your website is also sawyerinc.com. So if people just want to know more about the general contractor and um just kind of find out more about your company, they can go to your website and 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 learn there. Um, we will keep this up on the website, uh, on, on the BGC Advantage website, and Terrell, I believe it's available on your website as well. Is it will be, yes, we'll have it. Um, and um, I just did want to share that um, Holly mentioned some dates or perspective dates about closing. Doug talked about some average dates for construction, um, and just for any of the public that's listening, we all understand with a development project of this size, there are many, many moving parts. Occasionally things come up that cause things to be delayed. Sometimes we have to do things a lot faster than we thought we did. So the time frames that are given are just to kind of put things in perspective for us so we have an idea what's going on and not meant to be a firm commitment. We always have to have a window of flexibility in a project like this. And Terrell, thank you for uh, reminding our, our viewers of that. The other thing that we want to make mention is that, that um, we will be working with the residents. Nobody will be displaced. Um, everybody will have a place throughout construction, um, a safe place to, to lay their head. And our construction company will work with us on um, getting people prepped for construction, uh, for a move. Um, our relocation uh, team will actually provide boxes and moving company and handle all of those um, needs and um, residents really need not worry. And um, the loved ones of our residents need not worry. We will be uh, fully accommodating um, any of their needs and assisting them in, in various ways for these moves. And then they'll be allowed to move back to the um, to the site as well. So just wanted to make mention of that. As we get closer to um, kicking off the construction, we will have a, a resident meeting with the contractor and they will talk a little bit more about um, what to expect, what times to expect them on site, uh, what to look for in terms of contractors and what to expect during um, the on-site renovation. So. Um, I think there's more to come. I, I don't have anything else to add. Um, Bryce, Doug, Terrell, is there anything else you'd like to, to add as we wrap up this afternoon? No, I would just encourage uh, those that are on the uh, meeting today to let your neighbors and, and friends and business associates who were not able to join today to um, log into our website to get information about this important project and to be sure that anyone that wants to be involved knows how to get involved with us. 
Yeah, I think that we just about covered it all. If you have any questions, I think you, you have our contact information and uh, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great afternoon.